Right, hello and welcome to part three of making a portable line boring machine. So my far drive chuck has come and I've got that put in. I'll tell you what, that is bloody heavy. Took some lifting in. So in this, this episode, I'm gonna be boring these out to size. There's this one to do and then the big one that's made out of 100 mil plate. So to center this into the chuck, I think I'm gonna use a pipe center in the tailstock. And then push it again, the, push it again the chuck and then tighten these up. I think I'll have to turn these round so I'm holding it on them because there isn't, well unless I take the gap out, there isn't much distance in between there so I can't have them stuck out you know, past the sort of the outside diameter of the chuck. I finally got it mounted in the far draw chuck. I had to take the cat bed out because that one was catching on the bed. But I think I've got that true. It doesn't matter too much if it's not true because it just means I'll have a bit more metal at one side than the other. Same with them. It just means I'll, the hole will be slightly more to one side, but that doesn't matter. But it should be right because you know, I've centered it with the uh, pipe center. Right, so I've got that board out, I've given it a skim off, I've just put a bit of a leading edge on that edge as well. So that's that one done now, we can take that one out. Um, that one's ready for milling machine. We'll, we'll put the big thick 100 mil one in now and do the same with that. So I've got the big one mounted in the chuck now. Uh, to set this up I've used my alignment cone that I made for the line boring. You know, to, alignment cone for line boring. I've set that up on the tailstock for the pipe centre. I've got about 0.4 of a mil run out, which will be near enough. I've got one gauge block in there. That one, it seems it's a little bit slack. But the hole's not accurate anyway, it's only a, you know, a flame cut hole. Um, so I can bar that out, skim that face off, and then that face that I've skimmed I can sit that face down on the mill and skim the other face off you know and then both sides are true 
with the hole through the middle then. So I think that'll be near enough. I'll just go around and make sure they're all tight and then I can bar it out. Right, so that's both of them uh, barred out. That's barred out 65 mil. I barred that one out at 95 mil. I was going to do it 100 mil, but uh, it doesn't matter because I'm making the tube and the bearings that goes in there anyway, so I can just make that to 95 mil. Saves having to take another 5 mil out. So yeah, next job I can put them in the milling machine, find the centre of the hole, come down, Drill that hole, and then drill that hole, same as I did when I did the end piece. Except I'll have to put this back in the far jar again to machine the hole out there for the bearing. Because I haven't got a reamer or anything the right size, and it wants to be a tight fit anyway. So I'll have to machine that out. Right, so I've got this mounted in the milling machine now, and I've used my edge finder. And I found the edge of there, and then across to that side to find the middle of that. And I came around to that edge, found that edge, and then took half the diameter of that hole off. And I need that, the centre of that hole and the centre of this hole, it was 100 mil, so I took half the diameter of that hole off to give me this distance here, plus half the diameter of that. So I should be bang in the middle now, and I should be bang on 100 millimetres from there down to here. Which, well, I've had to convert 100 millimetres into Imperial because say, my dials are in Imperial. But yeah, pretty sure that's right now. So I can drill that through. I'm not quite sure what size I'm going to drill that yet. And then these want drilling out and reamering out to 45 mil.
So I decided to do the middle one through it, 35 mil. And then it gives me plenty of space to be able to make a nook then.
So I've got it out of the milling machine. I put them bearings in. They're a nice tight fit inside there. And I put it onto its rails. And that slides up and down there really well. Nice as that. So what I need to do with this now is drill them, drill and tap them holes so I can bolt these bearings onto this plate. And then I need to drill and tap that, well, drill the top bit and tap the bottom bit. I think I'll use an M16 bolt. And then I can nick them, nick them tacks off. And then I'll have to make a, a nut for the lead screw. I've done it out 35 mil. I don't know whether to make a, a nut out of some round bar make it bigger and bolt it in the same as these so like the nut has a flange on the end i can bolt it in or whether i machine it down with a step on one end and put a keyway in it so it can't turn and then just put a cap on the back side so it can't come i'd have to put a cap on both sides i think wouldn't I? and it can't come out i think it's probably better making one out around you know bigger one get some big round bar put a flange on it and drill it and tap it. I think that'll probably be the best option. So, so it fits the same as them. So I've put that back in the lathe. I've skimmed both sides down so it's nice and shiny. What I'm gonna do now is put them bearings in and mark them holes and drill, drill them through and tap them. So I've got all them drilled and tapped now. 
I absolutely hate tapping holes, so I just took them nice and steady, just to make sure I didn't snap the tap off in the hole. It would have been quicker to drill them all the way through and put a bolt all the way through, but these little bearings have a little recess for a, you know, the head of the uh, head of an Allen bolt to go in. So I drilled them and tapped them. It looked better as well. So this bit's nearly done now. There's just just that bit to do, and then this middle bit's done. So I'm about to drill this hole now for the bolt. I had to set it up in the drill press because I didn't have enough space in the milling machine to get the vice in, the part in, and then room for the drill as well. So not ideal, but should do it. So I've got that drilled and tapped now, tapped out M16. So what I'm going to do now is nick them tacks off the end so that'll spring open. Right, so this bit's pretty much finished now. I've got the bolt in there, so I'm going to try the drill in it and see what it fits like. Right, so it looks a bit more like what it's supposed to look like now. So I'll have to get some proper bolts for it. I'll just put them in temporary. And I'll I'll put a, an Allen bolt in there. I was going to countersink the head into the plate, but I don't think there's enough. It's not going to be wide enough to do that. So I'll just put an Allen bolt on and it'll be all right. But yeah, it slides up and down well. When I nicked that open, it did spring open a bit, but it was still fairly tight to get the drill in and out. I did still have to open it up a little bit with a chisel just to get it to open up enough to nicely fit the drill in. But it fits nice and snug now. Now I've tightened it down, it's you know, it's real tight, so that's good. So I could have done it a little bit lower down, a little bit tighter under there, but I suppose it would stop your fingers getting stuck if you have your hand under there. Because the, uh, the auto feed unit follows the same curvature as that. So I've got this big lump to tackle next. It'll be the same process, drilling them holes. But what I want to do to make it lighter is remove all this metal here. If anyone has any suggestions on the quickest way to remove that, let me know. Really, I, I, well, I haven't got one, but if I had a ver vertical bandsaw, you could cut in there with a vertical bandsaw and then in there and remove chunk all in one and then just knead it up with a mill but I haven't got a 
vertical bandsaw. I have got these um, face mills. So whether I could remove it all with that. But I'm not a machinist, so if anyone can suggest a suitable RPM feed rate and depth of cut for this end mill, uh, for this face mill, let me know in the comments. There's roughly 112 mil in diameter. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven inserts. So yeah, that's it for part three. I hope you're enjoying the series of watching me make it. We're getting there slowly. So yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.